Hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please give a like and please give a subscribe so we can keep the channel growing. I'll keep pumping out free content. Thank you. So this is one of those questions that's an entire book page, but let's read it and break it down and see what we have to do. I know it's going to be a diagram and these are the things that we have to have, but let's see what information we can get. Grange Home College is based on a large campus with access to a local area network. So this is a LAN um, in all areas. There are several dedicated computer rooms equipped with personal computers that have a wired connection to the network server. Okay, this is going to be important. Wired connection to the network server. All right. Remote access to the network is provided via a VPN. Okay. Via a VPN. So remote access to the network is provided via VPN. So we know that to get into the network, we need a VPN. The, the network is the network server is located on in a dedicated server room with secure access. So the network server is in a dedicated room with secure access. This typically means physical access. So it could be a locked door, a key, um, using a fingerprint, whatever the case is, right? We don't care. The network is used by IT technicians, administrative tasks, staff, teaching staff, and students. Okay, so everyone uses a network. Harry is undertaking a digital photography course at the college and wants to complete and submit an assignment from home. His assignment will include documents and photographs that are currently stored on his laptop, smartphone, and digital camera. He will submit his work using the college VPN. Um, his tutor will download and assess the work, draw a diagram to show the integration of systems that could be used in this process. The diagram should include devices and systems that could be used, devices to be connected <clears throat> and the connection types used, the flow of data through the system, annotations indicating the information. Okay, so this is quite a wordy question and draw questions seem to throw people off. So I'm going to move very slowly with this one if I can and explain everything I'm doing. Now, this is quite a tricky question if you've never actually looked at how to draw diagrams before. So let's look at the devices we think we will need. So I think, oh, what's it done? Oh no, I don't want it to do that. One second. I think it will need uh, PCs stroke laptops. Uh, laptops. We're going to need phones as well. May phones stroke tablets would be fine. Um, these are the devices that we'll need. We'll, we're going to need a router or routers. We're going to need switches. We're going to need maybe a hardware firewall. Um, what else do we need? The hardware that we need. I don't think we need much more than that. Now, the difference between a router and a switch, a router gives you access to the internet. Now, typically nowadays we have modems, routers, and switches all baked into one thing. So in your house now, you might have Virgin, EE, TalkTalk, Talk, whoever, right? And you have one single box downstairs somewhere in the house. That's going to be a router, a modem, and a switch. But for our purposes, let's just say routers give internet access. And let's just say switches connect devices within the network, so inside the network. Okay, so let's say you're in a computer room at school and there are 20 computers in that room and that, that room needs to be connected to, I don't know, a printer upstairs or linked upstairs something somewhere to give you internet access. What's going to happen? We're going to have all 20 computers connected to a switch and then that switch might then be connected to a router and then obviously the router will give you internet access. Under devices, I might as well put the server and we could say VPN here, even though it's not a device, it might appear as such on a diagram, but you will label everything anyway. And I think that's everything we need for now, right? I'm going to use PowerPoint, but when drawing your diagram on the actual paper in the exam, you can just put boxes. So for example, let's go here, let's do insert uh text box text box or shape let's do a shape let's i like the rounded rectangle so if every single item in your network looks more or less like this that's fine you just need to label this so this one might be pc for example this one might be laptop right this one might be printer it really doesn't matter once you can label everything because we're not all artists we're not going to be able to draw up a, a pc and a server and a switch and all of that stuff I'm going to do this in stages as to not make the video too long because I realized when drawing the actual thing and connecting everything, it took me very, very long. So the first thing I would probably want to add is my network server. And again, just put it in a box, 
label it. Once you label it, that's perfectly fine. This red box around it, that's going to be the locked server room. Going back to the paper quickly, it says there are several dedicated computer rooms equipped with personal computers that have a wired connection to the network server. Okay, so what this tells me is that in between my network server, I'm going to have multiple rooms. So let me copy this red box and that could be my room box, right? I'm going to have one room here and I think they said uh, technicians. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about that part for now. The IT technicians and the teaching staff and all of that. We're just going to have our rooms, right? And each room could have PCs, laptops, mobile phones and tablets. Maybe not so much because it does say wired connections. Quick note though. If it does say wireless connection, I'll quickly show how that would look. Let me copy this. We're definitely going to have a switch in the middle somewhere here. Right. And a switch again connects devices inside the network together. You don't actually need Internet access for a switch to work. You can connect your printers, your PCs, all of that stuff to a switch and it will work perfectly fine. Let me just line these up quickly. All I've done here now is just done room one, room two, room three. Doesn't matter what you name this. You could name this different departments if you really wanted to. But it, do, it, it did say that all the rooms are connected to the network server via wires, right? The easiest, easiest way to do this is to have a switch and to have these rooms connected to the switch. Now, we can have intermediate switches in between, but we're going to keep this diagram really simple. I'm going to go to insert, shapes, and again, the two-way arrow normally indicates bi-direction means it goes back and forth it's not just sending data it's not just receiving so even when i have to um let's say there was a printer up here so let me just copy this one and put it here for example even though we know that we typically only send information to a printer or data to a printer to be printed the printer does send some information back Think about the fact that when there's no paper or no ink in the printer, we see that flash, that thing flash up on our computer or our phone, right? That's the printer sending some information back. So there, it needs to be a bi-directional arrow. Now, in most cases, you don't need to actually use a two-way arrow, but it's recommended, I recommend it anyway, because it, it, it makes it very clear to the person who is looking at your paper that, okay, this data needs to go both ways, right? And in most cases, you want everything going both ways. So ideally what I should have is um, each of these PCs going to the switch, but that's going to take a very long time to draw. So hopefully you guys can just imagine that. I, this is the last one I'll do. But all these rooms are connected to the switch in exactly the same way. All these PCs would go to the switch and then the switch would be connected directly to the network server over here in that locked room. Okay, so I've connected all of that. Now let's give this entire system or this building or this school, this college, this office, let's give it some internet access. The best way to do that is to then have your switch connected to the router. Right? This is just like, let's just leave it as router. Let's not do modem as well. And then in front of the router, what I would have, because this is a, I think you said it was a college or a school, right? They're going to have sensitive data. They have a lot of data stored on that server. I think, um, let's go back to the paper. It said, uh, yeah, in any case, everyone's going to be using it. There's a lot of data on there, right? Um, so because it needs to have secure access, what we're going to put in front of the router is actually a hardware firewall. Now, you guys have probably only learned about software firewalls, so the ones that come with your antivirus or your anti-malware software, but there are also hardware firewalls. They look more or less the same as a router or a switch, typically a bit smaller in some cases, I mean, depending on the one you buy. And what they do, they do exactly the same thing as a software firewall, but they, it's a physical device instead. And what I'm going to do now is simply connect these. So let me copy that. I'm going to link my switch to my router and my router to my hardware firewall and my hardware firewall will be linked to my internet service provider so whoever that will be maybe virgin so if i do insert and if i do shapes i could do that cloud looking one that would be internet if i can find it here All right so that's the internet one okay and then i'll just have something going from there to there and this is how i'd actually get my internet so just to quickly review my switch in the middle connects all my PCs together using wires, right? That switch is then connected to the network server. That same switch connects to my router 
and my router connects to my hardware firewall. And a hardware firewall does exactly the same as a software firewall, but it's just an extra um, piece of protection in place, right? That hardware firewall will now link to an ISP. ISP simply means Internet Service Provider. So for us here in the UK, BT, Virgin, O2, whoever we use, that links to that. So whenever anything comes in, if it looks suspicious to us or to, to the firewall, it's going to stop that connection from continuing, right? Whatever is okay, then hits the router or router, and then the router sends it to the switch, and then the switch will say, okay, well, this needs to go to PC1 down in room 1. This needs to go to PC3 down in room 3. This needs to go to the network server. So now the final part is the person who is working at home, and it says... Um, he will submit his work using college VPN. He has his stuff stored on his laptop, smartphone, and digital camera. Okay, so let's just put these devices in again. I don't think I had all of them in. So in his house, let's put another red box down here somewhere. In his house, he's going to have a PC. Though, so that's his laptop. He's also going to have, I think they said a camera. And I believe it was um, a phone as well, right? And this is inside of his house. Now we don't really, we, we don't care too much about his security inside of his house. What we do care about, oh, let's maybe put these down here. What we do care about is how he's connected because they need to see all of this, right? In his house, I'm just gonna put a router, right? Don't care what router it is, don't care who he uses as the internet service provider i don't care um the phone is probably going to link to the pc so let's do an arrow there so that's how he sends his files or even usb it's up to you what, what you want to choose i would say bluetooth is probably the most convenient thing but usb is, is um they're very quick uh the camera links to the pc as well so let me draw an arrow from here to the pc and the phone, not the phone, sorry, the PC will link to the router. And what we can do for that one is use Wi-Fi. Okay. The router then goes to the internet and the internet will then send it over. But we need to have a VPN connection. There is no wrong or right way to do this. I would simply put for me personally, um, where am I? Where, how do I draw this now? So I've changed ISP to simply internet. So just to make my life a bit easier, I'm going to copy another arrow here and I'm going to go from this person's router inside their house. So these are the devices that he has his coursework on his phone. Yeah, let me just move this arrow, his phone, his PC and his camera. And those are connected together somehow. Doesn't really matter how, um, I would say, again, you grab, well, not a text box, but for me, it's going to be a text box. From phone to PC, I can say Bluetooth. I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. Bluetooth, right? From PC to camera, in some cases, again, it could be Bluetooth, but maybe this one is going to be USB. So this is how they are connected, right? And from PC to router, I would probably do Wi-Fi. That's probably the easiest way for most PCs. Now, you could do Ethernet as well, but because I'm not going to use Wi-Fi anywhere else, I'm just going to put Wi-Fi here. All of these would be Ethernet. So let me copy this Wi-Fi one. Let me do this one over here straight away. I'm going to put just put ETH, not for Ethereum, but for Ethernet. And every single line here is going to be Ethernet. So you could just put it next to it, or you could draw a ring around them and say all of these are going to be Ethernet. The best thing to do is to label individual lines saying Ethernet. I'm not going to do all of them in this section here, but just so you guys know, Ethernet, 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 everything going, there's Ethernet. Now, from the router to the internet, we could say fiber optic. That's probably the best thing to use, F-I-B-R-E-O-P-T-I-C, fiber optic connection there. So we get very, very fast and relatively stable internet. Now, Another thing that needs to go to the internet. So remember, remember, this is from the person's house. We're gonna want to. Oh, we're gonna want to have a VPN as well, because it says that he can only connect to the school's thing using a VPN. A VPN must go across the internet. Um, this is a bit of a weird one to draw, but what I would do is make it stand out personally. 
make it stand out that it uses a VPN connection. Oh, that's probably a good idea to do with this as well. Uh, maybe make that one gray. I don't know. Right? Fiber optic it uses a VPN connection and VPN goes across the internet and then into the school. Now, typically companies have have what's known as a direct line connection. This person will not have that to his school because the internet is, is going to be hundreds, maybe thousands of pounds cheaper per month to do it this way. So router using fiber optic VPN to the internet. And from the internet, whatever happens on the internet, we don't know, we don't care about. It goes from the internet to the hardware firewall. And I would probably say, let me move this down if I can. Between the internet and the hardware firewall, it's probably going to be fiber optic again. Because this is a school or a college or whatever it is, they're probably going to want to have a decent connection. So let's say fiber optic, right? And between the hardware firewall and the router, probably Ethernet again or fiber optic. It really doesn't matter too much because we're now inside the school's network. So hardware firewall to router could be fiber optic again so that we get the best speeds possible. I'm just going to put this here. Between the router and the switch again, why not fiber optic? Could be Ethernet as well. But fiber optic is really, really good for speed, right? It travels at the speed of light, essentially. So we might as well use the best one. Now, between the switch and the network server, I'm going to make it Ethernet again. So let me copy this. Ethernet is probably what's going to be used inside for everyone because it's just so easy to manage. Ethernet there. What else do I need to think about? Now, the phone could actually link directly to the internet using either a VPN as well. Or it would be 4G. So just to add an extra layer there, let me see if I can fit that in somewhere. Let me copy an arrow from over here. Uh, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna change this this arrow's color so it's a bit more obvious. Um, where do I go again? Shape format. Yep. Outline. Let's make this one green. Right. So this is my phone going to the internet using a VPN as well. But rather than using fiber optic. We could say this one is using, let's say 4G. 4G is like the nice one in the middle. 5G isn't that popular yet for everyone. So let's say 4G connection. So this goes like so. And I've uploaded assignments and, and work using my phone before. Remember again, all of these are going to be Ethernet. And they link to the switch. The switch links to the network server via Ethernet. So let's see what's next. Hopefully that made sense. Now, if you have any questions about the diagrams, please drop them in the comment section below. I will be doing a few more diagram questions, but if you guys have the questions there with you, paste them in the, what's that thing called? The section below. Anyway, paste them in the section below and then I'll copy them and I'll try to draw them as soon as I can. All right. Thank you guys for watching.